it. Okay. Well, thank you so much for being here. I do want to start everything off by introducing ourselves. Uh, my name is Marin Brennan. I uh, work in admissions. I um, went to RISD as well. I <laughs> lost my train of thought there, but I was a, I graduated from RISD a while back. And um, I am just excited to be here today to talk to you about the transfer process. Um, I'm actually also the transfer specialist in our office. So I'm really, really, really excited to, to walk you through our transfer application. There's been some changes since last year. And um, I think this will be a really helpful info session for you. And I am joined today by my colleague and friend, LJ. LJ, introduce yourself, please. Hi, everybody. My name is LJ. I'm also an admissions officer here at RISD. Um, I'll be sort of in the background, kind of managing um, the chat, kind of putting in helpful links that maybe, you know, have to do with what Marin's discussing in the um, presentation. I'll also be sort of answering your questions in the background, too. So if you have any questions, um, there's like a Q&A chat box function. Um, it should be kind of on the bottom of your screen. Um, it'll just say Q&A. If you want to click on that, a little box will come up. Um, and you can put in your questions there. I might answer some as the presentation's happening, but I'll also save some for the end when we have a little kind of Q&A um, section. So please be sure to put in your questions there. Um, and I'll kind of turn off my screen, my screen <laughs> uh, and go okay. into the background there. I too will turn off my screen and my screen because you just want to, I've spent some time on these visuals and I'm just going to let, I'm not going to let, you know, our faces interrupt any of the visuals that you'll see. So thank you so much, LJ. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you again, all of you for being here. Um, we're psyched to have you. So LJ, if you could just let me know that my screen is visible because I'm going to share the presentation uh can you see it yes all right oh and there's turning on the video but i'm gonna keep my audio because you know what that's what we're here to do you're here to hear all about this and see all about this okay everyone <laughs> so once again welcome Welcome, welcome, welcome to uh, application prep to the transfer application. Uh, and thank you all so much for your interest in transferring to RISD. And I, I want you all to know that we completely understand how overwhelming the application process is. You already know this. Um, because you have done it before, um, but maybe this is your first time looking into transferring to a school. And, and that in and of itself um, is a bit complex. So, so we're here um, for this info session to, to provide you with the resources and a walkthrough of our transfer application um, to help you navigate the process and you know find out what you need to know. So I do wanna say, please keep in mind, this is a general overview of the RISD transfer application. Our main focus will be the application itself. Um, this webinar will not address financial aid and scholarships, portfolio specifics, or our degree programs. We will get more specific into some of those in future application preps. And we also have other online info sessions like RISD 101 and portfolio tips that I encourage you to check out. Um, and, you know, as LJ pointed out, please feel free to enter any questions you have in the Q&A chat box, uh, but also perhaps maybe even wait till the end of the presentation just to see um, if your questions are answered during the presentation. So we will certainly have time to address questions um, after the presentation. Okay, so just, just to quickly show you the upcoming application preps that we will have. Um, you know, you can stay tuned on the admissions page of RISD.edu to see any upcoming info sessions. So the rest of the series um, for 2025 application cycle is here. And I did highlight application prep eight. That is another, another one that is specific uh, to the transfer application. Um, so I also want to let you know that you're, of course, welcome to tune in to the other application prep um, series as well. There's going to be some, much of what, much of it will be directed towards first year applicants, but certainly, you know, curating and presenting your portfolio is helpful. Um, you know, if you're interested in learning about 
um, you know, some tips for your writing sample or just the life cycle of the RISD application, again, you're always welcome to tune in, but keep in mind that application prep eight is specific to to transfers. Um, and again, just be sure to check out our portfolio tips webinars where we provide a lot of tips and advice for putting together your portfolio for RISD. Um, so once again, you know, this info session will be a walkthrough of our transfer application. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll also provide you with the resources to navigate the application process. And we're going to give you some tips and we'll address frequently asked questions about applying to transfer to RISD. Um, and like I said, like we said, we are going to be opening up to questions afterwards as well. So uh, again, any questions you have, be prepared to put them in the Q&A chat box. So we're gonna start with our transfer application deadline. Our only application deadline for transfers for 2025 is March 17th for summer fall entry. Please know we will not be accepting transfer applications for spring entry 2025. And, and please take the March 17th deadline seriously. In fact, we recommend men giving yourself a personal deadline of a week or two before March 17th, just to make sure that you have everything ready and um, you know not submitting anything at the last minute. The transfer financial aid deadline is the same as the transfer application deadline. So also March 17th. It'll be important to submit your FAFSA and RISD institutional financial aid form by this deadline. Um, all of our financial aid is need-based, and if you have any questions at all about tuition and financial aid, please uh, reach out directly to Student Financial Services, or SFS for short, and they would be happy to answer your questions. Now, these are the transfer application requirements. Uh, of course, the RISD transfer application, which we'll be discussing today, um, you'll include your statement of purpose, your academic transcripts, which will be your high school and your college transcripts, at least one letter of recommendation, but up to three. If English is your second language, you'll submit TOEFL, IELTS, or Duolingo test results. And we do have a minimum um, score requirement for those that are reflected on our website. You can submit SAT or ACT, but those are truly optional. You do not have to submit those test scores. And then your portfolio, which will be 12 to 20 examples of your best and most recent work. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later, but you know it will be directed towards the major that you are applying to that portfolio. So let's dive right into the RISD transfer application. Now, when applying to RISD as a transfer, you'll do so via our own transfer application, not the common application, which is important to know. So um, to access our transfer application, visit our website, risd.edu, select admissions from the top menu, then go to our transfer admissions page where you'll find the apply now button. Um, and also as a heads up, this page here will if you scroll down, as you already know, because that's how you found the information for this info session, you can see more information about upcoming info sessions and, and all that. Now, when you click that button, uh, the apply now button, it will bring you to a new tab and to this page where you'll create a new account if you don't already have one um, for your RISD application. Now, once you click on create an account, this page will open so you can register for an account and start the application process. Um, once you do, you'll receive an email from us with a subject line that says your RISD account registration, and that will have more info as well. After you create an account, you'll choose which application you'd like to start. Now, also, you can return to your in-progress application from here. So you can go to this page and just click on the application that you're working on. Now, as you can see, this page gives you information about transfer application as well as graduate. Um, but, you know, again, you're going to be clicking on the button that says start the transfer application. And it, this page also gives you some information about um, applying to RISD as a transfer and, and the eligibility. So as you all may already know, to be eligible to apply to transfer to RISD, you must complete 
one full-time year of college, which is 27 credits at an accredited institution by the end of the academic year in which you're applying. And at least 12 of those credits should be in liberal arts. Now we're gonna dive into the RISD transfer application itself and start breaking down the different sections. So um, this part of the presentation, we're gonna speak to a couple of sections in our transfer application. So when you open your application, it will bring you to the instructions page first. And here you can see more information about transfer eligibility um, and our deadline. Again, we only have one transfer application deadline for um, 2025, and that is for fall or summer fall entry. We do not have a spring uh, application deadline for, um, for the 2025 uh, academic year. The next page of the transfer application is major of interest. Now keep in mind, you can only apply to transfer to one major. And I'd like to highlight our 16 undergraduate majors. Um, there's a mixture of fine art and design. Again, you can only apply to one particular department. And I do wanna um, let you know that transfer admission is based heavily on space availability within each major. And unfortunately, admissions really has no way of knowing how much space will be available ahead of the March 17th transfer application deadline, because much of that space availability is dependent on what our first year students declare as their major, which happens a spring semester of their freshman year. Now, with that being said, we actually do know this year that our painting department does not have any room for transfers for 2025 entry. So please know, unfortunately, painting is not an option um, and not a department that you can apply for as a transfer this year. Now, again, because you can apply to one, um, to one department, you know, Choose a department you really want to be a part of. When department heads and faculty of that major review your applications, they're looking to get to know you and to see that you're genuinely interested in their department. So again, do your research, learn about each major, uh, visit our website, rizzi.edu. And if you go to the academic section and then select undergraduate study, you can scroll down to find information about all 16 undergraduate departments. And each, if you click on each one, you can visit their department page where you'll see the curriculum breakdown for that major. You can read course descriptions. You can see some student work. Um, you can also learn about faculty and the department's workspaces and tools. So back to the transfer application, um, you will select one of our undergraduate majors by clicking the drop-down menu. And as you can see here, painting is not included because again, unfortunately, our painting department does not have enough space to accept transfer applications for fall 2025. Now the se next section on the menu is biographic information and that's pretty self-explanatory. So we're gonna move ahead to the following section which is additional information. And here we'll ask you about any languages you're fluent in. And this is also where you select whether or not you'd like to include um, your SAT or ACT scores. And again, please know they are truly optional. You do not need to include them. Back to the language field real quick. Uh, for all applicants, you know, if English is not your primary language, the English proficiency field will appear. So again, if you enter in that your primary language is not in English, a new section will show up in the application. And so this English proficiency test is required for all applicants who speak English as a second language. English language skills are essential for critique discussions, which are a central part of RISD's education. And the ability to discuss art and design theory is more demanding than basic language skills, even for primary English speakers. Um, so for these reasons, we require evidence of your language proficiency. But please note, it is possible to have the language test requirement waived if you are enrolled in an institution where English is the language of instruction. Um, and you can please um, contact our admissions office by emailing us at admissions at rizdi.edu to see if you are eligible for um, a language test waiver. 
Also in the additional information page, um, if you scroll down, you'll, we'll also be asking you about the college classes you've taken um, or are in the process of taking. And again, these are college classes that you're taking as a college student, which sounds redundant, but I also know that a lot of high school students take college classes kind of as a dual enrollment thing, um, which is really great. But the, we're asking about your, your academic credits, college credits um, as a college student. Uh, so again, to apply as a transfer, you'll need to have at least one full year at an accredited college by June of the year in which you're applying. So by June, 2025, if you're applying to enter in summer, fall of uh, 2025, again, you'll, you'll need to be have uh, enough credits by then. Um, when reading your applications, we'll be looking at your transcript for this information, but these fields will help to see if you have or are working towards the necessary visual studio art credits and liberal art credits. Um, liberal art courses, you know, includes academic classes in humanities, history, literature, science, math, etc. cetera. Uh, also we ask, and as you can see at the bottom of this page, um, we ask for you to tell us when your spring semester ends. And, and this is important for us to know just as a heads up for us um, in regards to our transfer summer program, which I'll talk more about uh, towards the end of the presentation. Now for the academic history, your transcripts will be uploaded in, in this section, of course, um, and you'll need to include any college transcripts you have as well as your final high school transcripts or GED. So we need to see that you've officially graduated high school and um, being that you're in college now, that might be a no brainer, but we still do need to see that proof. And it is helpful for us to see your full high school um, transcript, again, the high school transcript that shows your graduation date, as well as any current uh, college transcripts. Uh, and, and if you've gone to more than one college, again, or more, you know, send us everything, show us everything that you have. Now, first in the application itself, you'll need to add each institution. So once again, this includes high school. So you just click on add institution. It'll open up this window um, and you can upload unofficial transcripts as you can see towards the bottom. Please note that if admitted, we will need your official college transcripts as soon as possible. But at this point you can put unofficial transcripts. Um, and again, unofficial high school transcripts can be uploaded here as well, but we do need to see the version of your high school transcript that shows us your graduation date. So your full high school transcript, even if it's unofficial. As for letters of recommendation, um, you know, instructors or mentors may write your letters of recommendation. And I encourage you to ask those who can speak to your potential as a RISD student. So I recommend asking your studio art instructor or professor. Uh, again, it's not required that you ask a studio um, art teacher, but they would probably have the best insight as to your potential um, to transfer to RISD. And again, you just need one letter of recommendation, but you can have up to three. Now click add new in the recommendation section of the application to send an invitation to your recommenders. So please know also that your application can be submitted before your recommenders send us their letters and they can send their letters to admissions at RISD.edu. Now um, this window will pop up when you click add new and you can fill out uh, this invitation, which again will be sent to your recommender. Um, you just need one. Uh, and again, they can send their, their letter of rec to us at admissions at RISD.edu. Next section we'll talk about is statement of purpose, um, which is your written statement about your reason for applying to transfer to RISD. And I recommend being specific about why you're interested in transferring into the department of your cho choice rather than only speaking to why you're interested in RISD in general. Um, it's again, you're, it's another area in the application for or the departments to get to know you and the, and the statement of purpose is another great area where they can hear your voice and your excitement about their department. Again, they're gonna want to um, seek out students who really wanna be a part of their major and, and have fun with it get creative, um, you know, just show us you and your personality and again, your voice. And, and again, 
this writing um, section here is a good is a good area to do so. You'll also see on the menu on the left hand side uh, that there is one section for your resume. It is not required, but if you would like to include it, you can upload a Word document or PDF. I don't have a screenshot of that page because again, it's pretty self-explanatory, but just know that's there for you, but it's optional. Um, so yeah, keep in mind that we welcome any insight to any other interests you may have beyond art, and you can include that in your resume or list it in another document that can be sent to admissions uh, at risd.edu and we'll attach it to your application. Okay, so now let's jump down to the menu down the menu list to the review section. So this page will show you if you're missing any information before you submit. And you can even click on the individual sections to go directly back to that page that's missing information. Now, please don't let the application fee prevent you from applying. If you're seeking an application waiver, um, it is it is possible to have that application fee, excuse me, the application fee waived. So please just email admissions at risd.edu to inquire about a fee waiver. And then um, let's see here. When you're ready to submit your application, click finalize application and pay, and it will bring you to, uh, which is at the bottom, this button here at the bottom of the page. Um, and that will bring you to the application fee page where you'll, where you'll submit your payment. But again, if you're requesting an application fee waiver, email us and we can assist you with that. Okay, so as you also may have noticed, um, the application portal is uh, the bottom menu item on the left-hand side. And so, Clicking that menu item will bring you to your status portal. Um, now from this homepage of the applicant portal, you'll click application checklist, that button there, and that will bring you to your RISD application checklist. So, you know, once you've started your RISD application, you'll receive an email with access to your portal. And this is a helpful way to keep track of what we have received on our end, what we're still waiting for from you. Um, please, give roughly 24 hours to see any updates in your portal. So even though this is of course digital and you you know click submit, it doesn't necessarily mean it's instant. So please give about a day to see um, if there's any update on your application checklist. After a couple of days, you know, of course, certainly always reach out to us with any questions, but after a couple of days, if you're still seeing that we haven't received something that you did submit, let us know and we'll look into it for you. Now below your application checklist is where you'll find the portfolio section. So you'll click this button to start the portfolio submission process. Now, again, we are not going to talk in depth about the portfolio in this session, but I'll touch on it briefly in the next slide. Uh, I, I do again want to encourage you to check out other application preps or, or other um, online info sessions like called portfolio tips, where we go more in depth about putting together your portfolio and, and some ideas for creating pieces for your portfolio. Uh, also, please keep in mind, it's always great to get feedback on your portfolio. And these portfolio review options are never required, um, but they are available to you. And I will talk about those um, in a little bit. So about the, you know, the transfer portfolio, again, it is 12 to 20 uh, examples of work it should be your best and most recent work. So work done within the last couple of years. And again, as a transfer applicant, you are applying to a particular major. So your portfolio should feel like it is directed towards that department. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't include other disciplines. You certainly can. Variety is welcome. But overall, it should be obvious that you are applying to the major of your choice. And overall, of course, we want to see your personality. We want to see risk-taking, your original ideas and concepts. Show us your point of view in anything that you're sharing with us. And I also recommend including some foundation-themed work. That's helpful to see. Even though you're not applying to experimental and foundation studies, it is still helpful for us to see um, your strength in those in, the, in your foundational skills, while of course still showing us your personality. But again, overall your portfolio is directed towards the major of your choice. So keep that in mind. 
Now, transfers, you will be submitting your portfolio within your applicant status portal, which you'll receive an email about, you know, you'll receive an email to activate that. Um, this is the biggest change this year for our transfer applicants. Uh, before it was slide room, but as a transfer this year, forget about slide room. It is actually going to be submitted again through the applicant portal uh, itself. So in the um, um, once you select that button that says submit your portfolio, you're going to upload your images in the box below. It'll bring you to this page and you'll see it'll bring you right to upload media. You can see all that information here um, and below it where I highlighted in blue, you can upload your images. You can either drag your files there or select files. Um, and you can certainly upload more than one image at a time. Absolutely. And then you'll select start upload. When you do that, a message box will appear at the top and it'll let you know how many files you'll be uploading and remind you, you know, be patient. It'll take a minute. So click okay to start the upload for your, or to, you know, accept that. And, and then it'll finish uploading your images. Now, if you click on the tab that says your portfolio, you can access your portfolio and see the layout of it um, on that tab. And as you can see here, you can actually edit each slide by selecting edit details. Now this window will pop up. So these are the details that you can add and you can edit. So the title of the piece, um, the year it was made, the size, medium, those are really helpful for us to know. And you can include a brief description. Uh, we ask that any description you have about your artwork um, is brief and is in the description box, not the slide itself, just because you're going to want to showcase your work in the best way possible and not take up space on the slide itself with any text that just speaks to your work, um, that just describes your, your work. You'll put that in the description box here. And again, I encourage you to keep it brief. Let the work speak for itself. Uh, and then you'll select the update button. I also want to point out um, with this, uh, with, with the portfolio in our application, you cannot edit the orientation of, of your image in this edit details window. So please keep that in mind. Um, it will be important to adjust the orientation and layout of your of each piece before uploading it. So, you know, again, you can go back to the upload media tab. Um, again, outside of the application, adjust the orientation of the image and then um, drop that edited photo back in the, the box where you can upload. And then you can just, you'll see all three, as you can see the example here, and you can just go back into the one that had the incorrect orientation click edit details, and then delete. So you'll delete that slide there. You can also um, click preview just to preview the, so the slide itself uh, to see it a little bit bigger, a little bit closer up. Um, and, and then as I mentioned before, these are the opportunities to get feedback on your work for this upcoming academic year, you know, in advance of applying for 2025 entry. So please keep in mind, we are going to be attending a few national portfolio days in person. Um, you can find all this information on our website as well. Um, and this year, we're actually going to be conducting more online um, portfolio days. So please keep that in mind as well. You can learn more on our website and you can register um, find registration information on our website as well. Again, these portfolio days are absolutely not required. They're not a part of the application. No admissions decisions are ever made at these events. It's just a really helpful way to get feedback on your work um, before submitting your portfolio. And just to show you a visual of kind of how the, the life cycle of the transfer application, um, the application, you know, will be due again March 17th. Um, the admissions office will help to ensure that the, all the applications are seen by 
um, the department, uh, the department head and the faculty of the department that you're applying to. They'll be reading your your applications and we will release decisions. We aim for, we aim for the end of April, but it's can also be early May when you find out your admiss admissions decision. Okay, so now for some frequently asked questions and a little, a few tips before we get to your questions now, but some FAQs, um, how many spots are available in my desired major? Uh, again, as we mentioned before, there's really no way to know at this point how many spots are available in any given major, aside from painting this year, um, because the space available for transfers is very much dependent on what our first year students declare as their major. Um, which happens around the transfer application deadline. So then each major department head determines how many more students their department can accommodate. And of course, this calculation determines how many transfer applicants we can admit to each major. So again, we'll let you know, please know that admissions will reach out to you and let you know if it turns out that your major does not have any space. And in that case, we'll work with you to um, and allow for you to to kind of pivot your application. And if you'd like to, you know, apply to a, a, an open department, you can. Um, but as again, as a reminder, the onset, you can only apply to one major at a time. So that that is a frequently asked question we get. Um, one major at a time, unless, of course, it turns out that the major that you're applying for just can't um, accept any transfers, then we'll reach out to you, but one major at a time. A uh, question we get often is, can I start at RISD as a junior? Now, most transfer students enter RISD at the sophomore level in summer, fall term. Almost no students transfer directly into their junior year, and this is because RISD has a unique transfer credit policy. Doesn't mean that that's not possible, um, but it most of our transfers enter as uh, sophomores. Um, now, if you've completed two or more years of college, you may be considered for advanced standing. Um, now, you must request advanced standing consideration in your first semester at RISD. So when you do so, your department head will determine which studio credits are eligible to transfer and, and how to ad adjust your curriculum. So please note that this advanced standing process takes place after you enroll at RISD. And um, unless we get, you know, we, we learn at the time of admission that your department head would like for you to enter in as a junior, uh, and the admissions office cannot guarantee your placement in junior year. So please keep that in mind. This advanced standing mostly happens when you arrive at RISD. Uh, also keep in mind that you're required to be enrolled full-time at RISD, and this means that you must take at least 12 credits per semester. So uh, it usually takes a transfer student who has two plus years of college credits um, over two and a half academic years to complete a RISD degree program. Now, another question we get is, um, what is RISD's transfer credit policy? And, um, you know, admissions is happy to help you learn if you have enough college credits to be eligible to apply as a transfer and, and which credits may possibly be transferable. Um, again, you can email us at admissions at .edu. Uh, However, it is ultimately, again, not our decision what can transfer over. To explain a bit further, RISD divides credits into two categories, liberal arts classes and studio classes. Liberal arts can include any academic classes like humanities, history, literature, sciences, math, et cetera. Um, and little, liberal arts credits will successfully transfer to RISD from classes with an earned grade of C or higher, but it's the dean of our liberal arts division who decides which credits are transferable. Studio credits transfer at the discretion of your major's department head and our dean of experimental and foundation studies or EFS, uh, which is our first year undergraduate program. And our Dean of EFS will decide whether or not you need to take our summer EFS program. So what is summer EFS? So um, a new transfer student enters RISD at the sophomore level, most, you know, more often than not. Um, and you're, that means you're skipping the first year at RISD, which is experimental and foundation studies. And for that reason, most new transfer students are required to enroll in a six week summer EFS program that starts towards the end of June. Now, transfer applicants with 18 comparable 
foundation art classes can be considered to waive this program. Um, if admitted to RISD, you will learn in your acceptance letter if you need to successfully complete summer EFS in order to enroll in the fall. So again, if you're required to, to take summer EFS, your um, um, entering in the fall semester is dependent on your successful completion of EFS. And that really just, that means showing up and doing the work. Um, that's all that means. So um, now I will say that every... RISD transfer student or RISD alum who did transfer to RISD, who I've talked to, has really gotten a lot out of the summer EFS program, and it's been a great way to transition into RISD and a great way to, an opportunity to work with artists that are going to be in different majors. Um, so, so, it, so it is a really uh, great summer program. And just to take a look at what that schedule looks like, this is kind of um, the breakdown of a week of this six week summer EFS program. Um, you'll be taking the studio classes that are required in our first year program, which is drawing, design, spatial dynamics. Again, I, I encourage you to take a look at our um, information on our website about experimental and foundation studies to learn more about EFS. Uh, but again, this is a condensed version of ES EFS for our transfers and it's six weeks and it usually runs from the end of June to early August. Um, another question we get a lot is the application different for international and domestic students. Please note that the application deadlines and requirements and forms and fees are the same for U.S. and international applicants. Um, however, there are still maybe some differences. For example, any applicant who speaks English as a second language, no matter where they're applying from, needs to submit their English proficiency test results. Um, and also keep in mind some international students will need to have their transcripts translated to English. So please be mindful of that. And then real quick tips before I open it up to Q&A, um, give yourself time so you don't have to rush. So please don't wait until the last minute. Start as soon as you can. Um, and certainly don't wait until three days before the deadline to start the application or to even submit three days. Like give yourself the cushion room um, so it's less overwhelming and less and less stressful. Try to finish your application, like the RISD transfer application, um, as soon as possible so you can leave time for the more fun part of the of, of any process, which is the creative process, you know, working on your portfolio. Um, now, keep in mind your application and your portfolio. Um, again, you can have your RISD transfer application done and then focus on, on your portfolio. Just make sure that everything's submitted by the deadline. The deadline is March 17th. And I also highly, highly, highly recommend that you secure your letters of recommendation ahead of time. Um, I'm sure you all have many professors who would be happy to write a letter of rec for you, but if they don't have enough time, they simply just may not be able to. And, you know, again, just because everything is submitted digitally, it does not mean you should wait until the very last minute to submit your RISD application and portfolio. Um, even as we all know, technology has some throws us some curveballs, so don't wait until the last moment. And, and certainly life has a way of, of surprising us too. So give yourself an advanced deadline to uh, so you can have some cushion room. And you know, try your best to have fun and enjoy the process. And remember that we know how overwhelming applying to college is. You know it because you've done it already. Um, and you know, whether you applied to college last year or some years ago, you know, and and the transfer application process can be particularly challenging to navigate, but we want to remind you to have fun with it. You know, um, keep in mind that we're trying to learn about you as much as we possibly can in the application itself. So just if the application is a way for us to learn more about you. Um, and please know, again, we are here for you every step of the way. So feel free to reach out to us anytime by email or phone. Um, and now I'm going to open it up to questions. So let me go ahead and stop sharing my screen. Okay, and get that video back up. <laughs> All right. Hello. Hello. Okay, so we have a few questions Excellent. Um, in the chat box. Mm -hmm. um, what is historically the most popular major? Mm. Great question. Historically, our most popular major is illustration. And that's not the only one that's the most popular, but it is um, 
our largest apartment, meaning there's the most amount of students have students in that major. And um my and I believe it's as popular. I mean, all of our majors are fantastic. Um, I believe illustration is quite popular too because it is so um it has a large umbrella too. So that one is our is has historically been our most our most popular major. Um, this one's kind of a nice segue. Um, this question is: I was wondering if drawing would fall under illustration. Um, I'm assuming that maybe this person wants to study drawing um, in school. Nice. Yes. Um, I would say now illustration isn't the only major that drawing would fall under. Certainly, illustration would. But I know that drawing is incorporated in all sorts of our uh, in many different majors. So, like illustration has, um, you know maybe a more, there's a, I, I do, there, there might be more opportunities or it seems like at least initially when it comes to drawing and illustration, for example, drawing is like a required course in the illustration department, sophomore year of any major is like the foundation year of that major and drawing is a part of it, but there are many departments that incorporate drawing. In fact, all of our majors are very, much um, interdisciplinary. Um, I also want to point out that all of our undergraduate majors, um, excuse me, all of our undergraduate students have to take four non-major studio electives um, in order to graduate from RISD. Now, some of your their transferable credits might take care of some of those, um, but you're but really you have four studio classes that you have to take outside of the major of your choice. Um, and then even without that, again, there's a lot of interdisciplinary exploration within each major uh, at RISD. And I want to point out that we do have a drawing concentration. Uh, concentrations are like our version of a minor. So rest assured, there's ample, ample opportunity to incorporate drawing in your artwork. Um, if the student has an associate in studio arts, would this count as placement um, for EFS? So, meaning is the is, I'm, I'm imagining. Does it mean that they'd be waived of the summer EFS requirement? Thank you. That's what I was thinking too. Um, possibly, uh, it, to be waived though, it is you have to have 18 comparable studio foundation courses. So when I say that too, it's like if you have classes that are very closely related to our EFS studios, which drawing, design, spatial dynamics, um then it's possible that you'll be waived of the summer EFS. Um, so so yeah, or or if you're coming from an art school that has the very similar um, studio foundation credits your first year. And again, if you have 18 of those credits by June of the year that you apply, you may be waived, but it, that is up to the Dean of EFS. So it is not um, the admissions office's decision. Um, are online or asynchronous classes considered differently for credit transfer? Um, no, as long as it's coming from a school that is accredited. So that's really the thing. It's, it could be an online program. It just has to be an accredited school. Forgive me, you can hear the sirens, um, and then street noise, but, um, as long as the program is a is accredited, it's fine. Uh, I do want to point out though, because that this kind of reminds me of a frequently asked question we get quite a bit. Um, RISD continuing, we have a continuing education department and we do have continuing and has a lot of great um, classes for, for adults, um, just some youth programs, things like that. I do want to point out, for example, like even if you've taken those online classes, those credits are not transferable. So I know that was like, kind of adjacent to that question, but I do want to point that out. Basically, you just check to make sure that your uh, college is accredited. And and again, if those credits um, are coming from an accredited institution, whether it's in-person or online, um, you could still be el eligible to apply as a transfer to RISD. And they could potentially still transfer over again, as long as you had the grades are at least an earned grade of C or better. We also accept pass if you're if it's pass fail. Um, but yes. 
Um, what do study abroad opportunities look like for transfer students? Great question. So we have a lot of great study abroad opportunities for all of our students, and I encourage you to look into RISD Global. Um, their website's awesome, and they have they'll highlight in more detail their oppor uh, the opportunities to study abroad. But for example, um, students can study abroad during winter session, which is a mini semester that falls, of course, between fall and spring. Um, it'll actually be, winter session is actually going forward, going to be an optional um, semester for our students, aside from our first year students. But um, it is actually one of our, like the most beloved parts of the year for all of our students, because it is, you know, people are eager to come back to studio and, and create, and it's also meant to be a slower pace and you take one or two classes. And I bring it up because it's possible to take a travel um, winter session class. You can take a travel course um, through RISD for summer class. We also have 40 something um, partner schools and you can apply to study abroad for a semester at any of those. So I definitely encourage you to check out RISD Global just to learn more. Um, so this is kind of a specific question, but I figured mm -hmm. I'd ask it to you anyways, because you'd probably know um, more than I. Um, this person's currently enrolled in a community college earning an associate's degree, but they have a bachelor's degree um, from another institution many years ago. Mm -hmm. um, if, I'm, if they're not looking to transfer any credits from the bachelor's degree, is the associate's program still eligible for transfer? Yes. If again, the associate's program is still is accredited, but you would still, even if you're not seeking to transfer any um, credits from your bachelor's program uh, or your, the degree that you earned, you you would still include that in your RISD transfer application. You, so you'd still add it the institution um, in the part that says academic history. You'd still um, include the school's information and upload a transcript and, and all of that, as well as your associate's program too. And again, for your associate's program, as long as it's um, an accredited institution, then it would still be eligible to um, not only make it so you're eligible to apply, which you are because you already have earned a bachelor's degree, but um, it would be if um, the credits are the credits are transferable, Ooh, a little mix up there. Um, they're potentially transferable because it's coming from an accredited institution. So again, when it comes to transferable credits, it is still ultimately um, up to liberal arts division as well as your stu um, studio department head. They work together with our registrar's office, um, and we can and admissions can kind of help to. Yeah, you're welcome to email us. You can send us your transcripts and we can take a look and see like, yeah, it seems like you'd have enough credits and things like that. Um, but again, it's ultimately not up to us. And I do encourage you all to like look into your schools to see if they're accredited. Um, I know there's an accreditation database as well as just Googling it to and asking your institution. Um, but yeah, that's a, a requirement as well, just that it's an accredited institution or institutions. Um, are transfer students able to change their major after admission? It is possible, but we, again, we are looking for students and the department specifically are looking for students who are specifically interested in their department. So you're going to want to reflect that in your application. And we're also, um, you know, it is possible to change your major, but please apply to RISD and apply to the RISD department that you want to be in. Now, of course, it does happen um, that you arrive in your department, either as a first year or a student or as a transfer, you're coming in. It is possible to realize, wait a second, I actually am really interested in this other major. And depending on the time of year in which you, or the time of your time at RISD and like when you, you kind of look into and propose transferring majors, it is possible, but it also, it's not also always guaranteed. Back to painting as an example, they're so full within their major of students where even internal um, transfers aren't uh, possible or aren't, um, more, most likely not possible. So I want to say to answer that question, 
it is possible, but also please don't apply to our department in hopes of ultimately going to another department. We really are looking for transfer applicants who want to be in the department they're, they're applying to. Um, is it possible to catch up with credits that didn't transfer over the summer or winter? Yes, if, if the question means like any, so yes, like summer or winter of the RISD, of the so RISD. Imagining, yeah, so I'm imagining maybe yeah. they get to RISD and they have yeah. credits that didn't transfer over. Is mm -hmm. there opportunities to then make those up over the summer or winter? Absolutely. So certainly now the summer EFS, the three classes that you're taking, you're going to be fulfilling like nine credits that you need. So you're going to be finishing off like the RISD EFS credit requirement. Or again, you if, if not fully or any other uh, credit, you know, that didn't transfer over, certainly you'll have, um, you'll be able to make those up at RISD during winter session or um, in fall or spring or even, you know, summer if you're taking it. Uh, if also internships do count as credit. And oftentimes I believe their, their credit is our classes are, um, all of our classes are each three credits, but internships, I believe are six. So that's another way that you could fulfill your degrees credit requirements. But, but to answer your question in a simplified way, yes, certainly there'll be opportunity to make up, um, those credits while at RISD. And, and certainly I do want to let you know that we do whatever we can. And by we, I mean, our, Registrar's office are fantastic. Um, you know, the department heads, um, EFS, liberal arts, they we work together, they work together to try their best to transfer over as many things as possible. So as many transfer credits as possible. So also as an example, you know, if you're going to a school that where each of your classes are five credits each, again, when they convert over to RISD they turn into three credits, but they try to get creative with it where it's like, okay, well, three of these credits can transfer over, you know, smoothly. And then they try to combine the two that are left over with, like they try to piecemeal it together enough so they're transferring over as many credits as they can. Again, all of that being said, a RISD transfer student really will be here at RISD at least two full years, more often three or, you know, two and a half, so you know, keep that in mind as well. A lot of information I know. I wasn't joking when I said the transfer <laughs> process because it's a little bit complex, um, but we're here to answer any questions um, throughout the process. So um, I, you know, if there's no other questions for this evening, I certainly want to, or wherever you guys are all tuning in from with this, you know, midday, morning, um, certainly please uh, this isn't the last time or the only time for you to get your questions answered. Please, please, please don't hesitate to reach out to us at admissions at RISD.edu. Um, and I do want to thank you all so very much for your interest and for being here. Um, this will be recorded as well and will be posted soon. So please know you can return to it and, and certainly tune in to future info sessions and, and all of that. Um, thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, LJ, for your help. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. Truly, truly. I, it's, it's a joy to talk to you all. So have a wonderful rest of your summer, your day, your week, everything. Thank you all so very much. Bye. Bye.